next video, I'm going to be building a parachute for my 4 inch rocket. The rocket this is going on is around 1900 grams or about four and a quarter pounds. So I need a good sized parachute and it needs to be nice and strong. So let's get started. So first off, let's take a look at the material I'll be using for the parachute. I'll be using a plastic shower liner. Now that's not this outer decorative section of the shower curtain. That's this inner white plastic sheet. Now here in the store, there's a couple of different options for this product. There's a light duty, a medium duty, and a heavy duty. And that's basically just the thickness of the plastic. If I was going to be making a parachute for a small two inch rocket, I would definitely go for the light duty because it folds up much smaller. But this is going to be going on a four inch rocket, so I'm not really too concerned with size, but I do want strength. So I'm going to go with the medium duty for this one. Now this parachute is going to be an eight-sided parachute, 34 inches across. Now one of the important factors about this is getting the diagonal sides the same length as the straight sides. I'm going to show you a really easy method to do that. So before cutting out the parachute, we need to do some quick math. I'm going to take the width of the parachute. You can use inches or centimeters, it doesn't make any difference. My parachute is 34 inches wide. Take that number and divide it by 4.83. The answer I come out with is 7.039. Just take that number and if you're using inches, round it to the nearest quarter inch. If you're using centimeters, you can just round it to the nearest centimeter or even millimeter. So that rounds out to 7 inches. Write that number down, whatever your answer is. You're going to need that a little bit later. I've drawn out a 34 inch by 34 inch square on my shower curtain material. Make sure that your parachute section doesn't include this reinforced and eyelet section at the top. And also some of these curtains have a little magnet area at the bottom. You don't want to include that section in your parachute either. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Now that I've got that cut out, we've got to fold it up. So we'll, first we'll start by just folding it in half. And this can be a little tricky because it has a lot of crease lines in it from how it was packaged. Just get it as close as you can. And then once it's folded in that direction, just fold it over in the other direction. And what you'll end up with is one corner, this one here that I've already marked, where all the corners are separate from each other. So I've gone ahead and marked that corner because that one's important. Now that calculation we did earlier where we took the width of the parachute and divided it by 4.83 my answer on that was 7. So what we need to do is come up on an opposite corner from where we've marked that and come down and mark seven inches, seven inches from this corner here. Now, then we'll go to the other opposite corner from our X and we'll do the same thing and mark seven inches in from this corner. And then we just need a longer ruler and we'll go ahead and draw a line that connects those two points. And then go ahead and cut that off. Make sure that while you're doing your cut, everything stays pretty accurate as far as the corners, nice and flat. And these parts we don't need, but what we're going to end up with is an eight-sided parachute that's pretty accurate on all eight sides. Next we need to reinforce the corners where the strings are going to be attached and for that I'm just going to use some duct tape. Now if this was a small parachute for a lightweight rocket you could just take a little strip of duct tape at each corner, tape it on, wrap it around, so you get the two layers of tape and then either take a sharp poking tool 
or a little hole punch tool and just punch a hole through that and that'd be strong enough. But this parachute is for a larger rocket and we need to reinforce this a little bit more than that. I've cut out two pieces of duct tape, three inches long. And this first piece is going to go on this edge here. I'm going to line the parachute up down the center of the tape, but I'm not putting the edge of the tape right at this corner of the parachute. Use that to line it up, but then I'm going to move the tape upwards just until the corner of the tape reaches this other edge. I'll go ahead and tape that down, wrap that around, and stick that down on the other side. And what we're going to end up with is a little triangle of the tape that sticks off past the edge of the parachute. And we'll go ahead and cut that off. The second piece of tape does the exact same thing on the other side. We line the center of the tape up with the parachute edge and then move that down until we get the corner of the tape at the edge of this side of the parachute. Stick that down, wrap it around, stick it down to that side. And again, we're going to end up with a little piece of tape that sticks off of the edge of the parachute. And we'll go ahead and cut that off. And what that gives us, right here in the corner where we need to attach our string, there's four layers of tape right there. We can either take a sharp poking tool and poke a hole through there. I like to use my little single hole punch. We'll come up from the corner of the parachute about maybe about quarter to three-eighths of an inch or so and punch a hole and that's going to give us a nice strong mounting point for the parachute strings. The corners are all reinforced so let's take a look at the string that we're going to be using. Now if this was a smaller parachute for a lightweight rocket I might go with a small string like this it's kind of uh, like a kite string but this is a heavier rocket we need a stronger parachute assembly so I'm going to be going with this slightly larger string here. I purchased this at the hardware department in a department store or just at any hardware store will typically have a string like this. Now as far as string length I like to start out with strings that are about 25 percent longer than the width of the parachute so this is a 34 inch parachute so I'm going to cut eight strings that are 42 inches long it's easy to make them shorter later. It's a lot harder to make them longer. Depending on what type of string you're using, you may have some problems with the knots loosening up. This is a polypropylene string. Nylon string reacts similar to this. You see if I just mess with the end just a little bit, it likes to fray very easily. Also, if you tie just a simple half knot in this type of rope, and then you just mess around with the knot a little bit, it'll loosen right back up and come apart. Cotton-based strings won't do this, but all the synthetic strings will. So we're going to need to do some things to this string before we attach it to the parachute so that these problems don't happen. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just melt the end of the strings on both ends and make this little plastic nubbin on the end. And just as that's cooling down, you can take and roll that a little bit and that'll join all the strings together and keep the ends from fraying. I'll do that to the ends of all the strings. Now we're ready to attach the strings to the parachute. So I'm just going to take this and tie a simple half knot. And I'm going to get that nice and tight so it crushes down the edge of that duct tape. Now it is going to try and loosen up, so I'm going to get it nice and tight. And before that has time to loosen up, we'll put another half knot on top of that. And again, that one is going to try and loosen up as well. So we'll get it nice and tight as best we can. And then I'm going to take the scissors and cut the tail of this off and leave about a quarter of an inch 
of the string. And then take my lighter and very carefully just melt that down just until that gets to the edge of the knot and then push that onto the floor tile and let that cool. And what that's going to do is make a, a flat melted part of the string right at the end of the knot so it can't come undone. Now bring your strings all up to one central location making sure that they're not twisted together. Now you can either tie a knot right here which is what I'm going to do or if you're ready you could tie this directly to either your shock cord or to the, your nose cone depending on which technique you're using. But for right now I'm just going to tie these all together so that I can go test this out in the wind. And there it is. We've got just a very light breeze today. That's the end product. We'll be using that on the next 4-inch rocket launch. Thanks for watching.